This is Yireh Yesharan, and welcome to the Mission of Submission, where we discuss the biblical principles that women should follow if they want successful and functional marriages and families. The things that I teach are the biblical concepts that I follow in my own life that have been proven to work historically. Blessings to everyone watching. It's the mission of submission. Hey! Can't stand it, you stay out the kitchen. Peace to everyone. We're about to discuss a little bit about the fact that most modern women want to have multiple sexual partners in their life. I'm going to play this clip from this movie called The Tale, which is a movie about a woman who was molested as a child. There was a particular scene in this movie that was very revealing of the attitudes of most women today. You were always special to me. Um, Jesus. And then after that, you became so promiscuous. You slept with all kinds of men, foreign men, married men. You didn't care about the wives. You didn't um, care about anything. You sound very old-fashioned. That's old-fashioned, huh? You were with one man your entire life. I didn't, I didn't want to be stuck like that. I didn't want to be like you. Me. Notice how the older lady, who is the mother, seems to be disgusted by the promiscuity of her daughter. The daughter, however, appears to be disgusted with the sexual chastity of the mother. The daughter thinks it's a bad thing to only be with one man her whole life. This clip is 100% the attitude of most women today. You were always special to me. Um, Jesus. And then after that, you became so promiscuous. You slept with all kinds of men, foreign men, married men. You didn't care about the wives. You didn't um, care about anything. You sound very old-fashioned. That's old-fashioned, huh? You were with one man your entire life. I didn't, I didn't want to be stuck like that. I didn't want to be like you. The younger lady speaking in this clip is speaking the sentiments of most women of today's time. She thinks that it's sad that her mother only had sex with one man in her life. She thinks it's better that she has had sex with multiple men. She even called her mother quote-unquote old-fashioned. That's typically what you'll hear modern women say when you start telling them about the way things are supposed to be, according to the scriptures and according to nature. They're going to tell you that this isn't the 1950s anymore, and that in their minds, women have advanced and improved more than ever before, even though the complete opposite is true. The biggest reason why women think this way is because it's what's promoted in the media, in rap and R&B songs, and even in schools they teach women that it's good to explore their sexuality with various people. And a lot of women are enticed by this because, as it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Unquote. So they appeal to the women's carnal lust and pride, which is what this world has to offer. And since there's no one stopping or punishing modern women for this behavior, but on the contrary, it is actually encouraged, then they don't feel the need to change. For anyone who watches Netflix, you may have noticed all of the subliminal messages from movies and TV series that show women being more powerful than men or being bosses over men. Almost every recent Netflix series or movie is like that. This is done purposefully to program modern men and women to think this way and it's working like a charm. There's a series on Netflix that's about a year or two old now that was very entertaining called The Society. The plot was that all of the adults disappeared and society had to be maintained and ruled by adolescents. Not surprisingly, the females were primarily the rulers in the society. 
This is the mind control program that modern women are put under, which is why they don't know anything about the proper role of a woman. For some women, they don't even consciously realize that they want multiple sex partners. But it's more of a subconscious thing. This is why a lot of women sabotage their relationships or always find some fault in whatever man they're with so that in their minds, they can have an excuse for going to another man. Since modern women don't see a problem with having multiple sex partners and since they think it's a good thing, Let's listen to some reasons why the truth is that it's a terrible thing. According to the Bible, a woman is analogous to the earth or land. That's why the earth is often referred to as a she or as a female. Here's a few examples. Job chapter 1 verse 21 reads, And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Unquote. So here, Job is saying that he came out of his mother's womb naked, meaning with nothing. He then says, quote, And naked shall I return thither. Unquote. Meaning, he will return back to his mother with nothing that he acquired in this life. Obviously, he cannot be returning back to his human mother. What he's referring to is the earth, and the fact that he'll take nothing with him when he goes to his grave. This is why it says in Second Ezra, which is a part of the original KJV Bible, when Ezra is speaking to what he believes to be a woman who has just recently lost her son, he tells her the following. Second Ezra chapter 10 verses 8 through 14 read, And now, seeing we all mourn and are sad, for we are all in heaviness, art thou grieved for one son? For ask the earth, and she shall tell thee, that it is she which ought to mourn for the fall of so many that grow upon her. For out of her came all at the first, and out of her shall all others come, and behold, they walk almost all into destruction, and a multitude of them is utterly rooted out. Who then should make more mourning than she, that hath lost so great a multitude, and not thou, which art sorry but for one? Unquote. So here in verse 9 through 10, we see Ezra is speaking about how most of the earth's children go into destruction and how the earth should mourn more than anyone else. So we're going to continue to verses 12 through 14. And they read, But if thou sayest unto me, My lamentation is not like the earth's, because I have lost the fruit of my womb, which I brought forth with pains, and bear with sorrows. But the earth not so, for the multitude present in it according to the course of the earth is gone as it came. Then say I unto thee, like as thou hast brought forth with labor, even so the earth also hath given her fruit, namely man, ever since the beginning unto him that made her. Unquote. And as it says in verse 14, Ezra is saying that just like the woman birthed her son through labor, the earth has done the same when it birthed man. Again, it's clear that the earth is being personified as being a woman. Likewise, in Second Esther chapter 5, when Ezra basically asked the Most High why he doesn't just cause more people to be born all at one time so that the end can come sooner, here was the Most High's response. Second Esther chapter 5 verses 46 through 48 read, And he said unto me, Ask the womb of a woman, and say unto her, If thou bringest forth children, why dost thou it not together, but one after another? Pray her therefore to bring forth ten children at once. And I said she cannot, but must do it by distance of time. Then said he unto me, Even so have I given the womb of the earth to those that be sown in it in their times. Unquote. As you can see, the Most High compared the earth to a woman saying that the same way that a woman cannot bear ten children at once, 
but instead does it one after another, is analogous to the way the womb of the earth operates. The earth is said to have a womb, just like a woman. And you can also see Jonah chapter 2 verse 6, Haggai chapter 1 verses 10 through 11, Sirach chapter 40 verse 1, James chapter 5 verse 18, and 1 Maccabees chapter 14 verse 8, in the KJV Bible for more examples of the earth being referred to in the feminine. So metaphorically speaking, women are the soil or the earth that men are supposed to plant their seed into. We just read that the land or earth is referred to in the feminine, and according to Leviticus chapter 15 verse 16, a man's sperm is his seed of copulation. It says in Leviticus chapter 15 verse 16, And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water, and be unclean until the even. Unquote. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 9 reads, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Unquote. As it says here, it is against Yah's law to mix different kinds of seed together into the soil. If you do so, the soil becomes defiled. The same principle applies to the woman who's not supposed to have different men's sperm put inside of her, or she'll be defiled. That's exactly why Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 1 says, They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith the Lord." Unquote. When it says, shall he return to her again, it's asking a rhetorical question. That means, if a man divorces or simply separates from his wife, and she has sex with another man, he cannot take her back. Why? Because as it says, shall not that land be greatly polluted? So the land, which is the woman, has been polluted by sleeping with another man. This concept comes from Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 4, which says, Her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance." Unquote. So a woman who has sex with multiple men is defiled. This is why many of our women today are so mentally unstable and unable to even be in a relationship with a man. As it says in Numbers chapter 5 verse 29, This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Unquote. So again, when a woman sleeps with various men, she becomes defiled. That's why in Hebrew culture, virgin women were considered so valuable. In Leviticus chapter 21, when speaking about the high priest who is supposed to be the most holy and set-apart person in Israel, it says in verses 13 through 14, And he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow, or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife." Unquote. The Hebrew word for virgin in this verse is bethula, which means someone who has never had sex. The high priest can only take a virgin woman because he's supposed to be the epitome of righteousness and cleanliness. He can't take a woman that has already had sex with other men because she's not up to standard. The rest of this video will be a segment of the video I already made called To the Virgin. Number one, the more men you have sex with, the more you become desensitized to the pair bonding that sex is supposed to create for you. Sex causes you to become one with your sexual partner, which is why Genesis 2 and 24 says that a man and a wife will become one flesh. 1 Corinthians 6 and 16 says that even a whore is one flesh with a man that she has sex with. The more sexual partners you have, 
the less significant sex will be to you until you consider it just meaningless pleasure. It will no longer cause you to be bonded to a man, which is what you need in order to maintain a lifelong marriage. This is why prostitutes can have sex with 5,000 men with no issue. But generally speaking, a woman who is a virgin feels connected to the man who broke her virginity. The more men you have sex with, the more male spirits and DNA you will have inside of you. As women, we are the receivers. We are to receive our man's knowledge and wisdom. We receive his guidance and direction. We also receive his penis, his sperm, and his child inside of our belly. You also receive spirits from the men you lay with. There's something called microchemerism, which is the phenomena where women have been found to carry male DNA, even if they never had children. It is believed that one of the ways to receive the male DNA is by having sex with a man. Yes, you can literally carry the DNA of men you have sex with. I will post the links to a few of the studies in the description box. In today's society, they will try to hide this information from you because they want women to be sexually immoral. So be sure to read the studies for yourself. The more men you have sex with, the looser your vagina becomes. You are experiencing different penis sizes over the course of years. Few people in our society will tell you this, but every woman knows that her vagina was not the same when she was a virgin or had only had sex a few times compared to how it is after she has had sex a thousand times. Men can also tell the difference. Men will tell you that some women's vaginas are tighter or looser than others. Or if a man marries a virgin, as time passes, he can tell that her vagina is becoming looser. This is why you are supposed to give your virginity and tightness to your husband and stay with him for the rest of your life. You are supposed to come to him with a vagina that has already been stretched out by other men. It's also more difficult for you to remain faithful to one man and enjoy sex with him because of everything I've just mentioned. When you've had a lot of sexual partners, you generally have more sexual demands because you've experienced so much. You will compare the sex you have with your husband to the sexual experiences you've had in your past with other men. You can even become bored of him because you're so used to experiencing so much variety from different people. This was all understood by the ancient societies of the world. The Bible says that there's nothing new under the sun. People in ancient times understood a lot of things better than we do now, especially since the majority of us have been purposefully dumbed down by the powers that be. The ancients knew how important a woman's virginity was, and even high-quality men today know how important it is for a woman to be a virgin, or at least to have a low body count. If you'd like to donate to support the lessons and music on this channel, my cash app is in the description box below this video along with my email for any sister who'd like to contact me directly. You can also visit my website by clicking this link. Sisters can join the chat forum where we discuss biblical submission at this chat forum link. Sisters can also schedule one-on-one -on -one counseling and coaching at this private counseling link. Brothers and sisters are also welcome to visit our online store by clicking this mission store link. Shalom, and thanks for listening. Fishing with everything, puts her above the.